So time is a problem. It's a problem because it's supposed to be relative and bendy, according to Einstein, but it needs to be rigid and absolute for quantum mechanics to work. They can't both be true, and so we end up with the so-called problem of time. There have been many attempted resolutions to resolve the apparent paradox, but because the paradox seems to lie at the heart of the merging of Einstein's theory of gravity and quantum mechanics, the natural place to look is in the quantum gravity literature. And the first real attempt to quantize gravity was by Bryce DeWitt, resulting in what is now known as the Wheeler-DeWitt equation. In a sense, the Wheeler-DeWitt equation gives some intuition into how the problem of time might be resolved. Because time just doesn't show up in the equation, it suggests that time is an emergent phenomenon internal to the universe as a whole. This is in the same way that wetness is an emergent property of water that isn't built into the equations describing H2O. Under this view, the universe is best described as timeless, with time only being a relational description of events in the universe. For those interested, this is consistent with the B theory of time. But how, then, is there time in a universe that is fundamentally timeless? Page and Wooters proposed a solution. Perhaps time is just a measure of correlation between quantum objects called clocks and quantum objects you want to measure. If so, there will appear to be temporal evolution from an inside observer's perspective, even if the whole system is timeless. And oddly enough, this phenomenon has actually been realized experimentally using a toy model of the universe. In an experiment by Moreva, Gromegna, Brita, Macon, and Genovese, they used the horizontal position of a single photon as the clock and the vertical position as the system to be measured. The experiment goes something like this. First, they polarized a photon so that it was in a superposition of two distinct polarization states. And then, using a polarizing beam splitter, split the superposition so one polarization was at one vertical position, and the other was at another. These two polarizations were then passed through a quartz plate to rotate the polarizations by an amount proportional to the width of the plate. This width is then associated with the duration on the clock, because the clock is measured by the horizontal position of the photon. Finally, they split the photon one more time and measure the probability of the photon ending up in each of the four final states. In doing so, they could recover how wide the quartz plate was. And if one believes that time is just a relationship between quantum observables, then one can recover a notion of duration elapsed between the first and second beam splitters. Importantly, this measurement only makes sense if you're in the toy universe, interacting with the photons. On the other hand, from an external point of view, which is modeled here as not becoming entangled with the photons by measuring them, they showed that each photon is uniformly spread throughout the whole experimental setup, and so, for the duration of the experiment, is unchanging. That is, time can be experimentally realized as an emergent phenomenon in a globally timeless universe. Now, of course, this might not be the solution to the problem of time, but it's certainly a possibility. And then, using a polarizing beam splitter, split the split. The, they showed that each photon is uniformly spread throughout the whole entire.